Hi everyone, it's Neil Snape and I'm going to try to do um, a tutorial on how I do an edit in Lightroom and a little bit of retouching afterwards in Photoshop. So I'll show you the steps in Lightroom. In Photoshop I'll explain what you have to do and that goes quite quickly. Anyways, let's get started. So here is um, an image of all three put together. On the right hand side is the raw image. Uh, absolutely no corrections whatsoever. In the middle is the same image after it's being cropped and um, color corrections and densities changed before it went to Photoshop. And on the left is the, the same image as the middle, but because uh, I'll explain what I did in Photoshop. So some of the points in the, um, the freckles, I took those out because I think overall it's better. There are some lines in here from the top she had on. I used a contextual fill took those out and I corrected this area in here so that I um, even that out so you don't see it as much and the tiniest little bits in the uh, around the face any temporary pimples or anything like that were taken out and one red um, blood vessel in the um, in the eye and that's all I did in Photoshop so it took um, not more than 10 minutes and we're gonna actually make another one now let's do the image. So we're going to go to D for develop and the first thing we're going to do is crop the image. So press R that'll take you there and you can see that I'm on original constraints. So the original format which is a Canon 5D Mark III which means it's going to be 2 by 3 So I like this image when it's a little bit tighter. I can drag it. It doesn't change the, um, the format, the original format, but it does lose a bit on the um, left side so I'm going to move it over a little bit to the right and anyways it looks great so I'll press R again that means validate or you could double click on it and it'll do the same thing and that's the image it's already cropped it's ready to go so we're gonna go through the panels one by one we always start with panel one which is the basic panel which is command one and it'll take you there now you can see that it's kind of green in the image and that's coming through double pane windows is green so what do you do about that? You pick up your white balance tool and this white wall, I don't know what type of white paint it is though, I just know it's a white wall and I'm going to look for an area that I want to go to gray. So I clicked on there and it tells me that it's plus 16 magenta now. Um, that's almost enough but I know by fact if I use my X-Rite color checker passport it actually should be more like between 18 and 20. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit and it'll be a better gray than it was before. Looks about right to me. Color temperature. That's just visual if you want it to be represent a warmer light or not. In this case, it's a little bit flash. I can try and see. You don't want to make her too cold. You don't want to make her too yellow. Um, whatever visually makes you happy, I think there is good. So what else can I do? Exposure. Exposure, if you look in the histogram, is looking very good. It's got detail almost everywhere. No real pure whites according to this, but in the end, actually, it's it's quite bright in this little area of the, um, the wig. So I don't think I'm going to change the exposure very much. I might even take it down a little bit because I want the gray in the background to just look a little bit more darker. Now, you could say, well, that... That messes with uh, skin tones. Yes, it does, but I'm going to use a brush later and um, bring those back up again. Uh, contrast. In this case, because I might be playing with the contrast a little bit later, but not directly, I'll be using the uh, tone curves, which when you make things go darker, it actually increases the, um, the contrast and also increases saturation. That's why I'm going to reduce this a little bit. I'm going to go down here and see where the highlights are living. I don't think I'm going to change those much. So, if anything, I'll leave it there. Shadows, I'll see what it looks like. But if anything, I can make it a little bit... Mm, it's not bad when it's a little bit high. So, shadows I took up a little bit. Whites. Whites are going to play in my background a lot. But also, if I take that down too far, I get a better background. But I also, her skin mm, is not liking that much. So... I think it has to look lively around there, so plus one or it's almost zero. Blacks. Blacks, I'm not going to change much because this image doesn't have much blacks. Leave it at zero. Clarity. Cl 
clarity is mid-tone contrast in zones. Now, Photoshop is, or Lightroom is not very good at uh, clarity. If I add, you'll see what happens. She'll just go really ugly, crunchy black if I add a lot. If I take out a lot, it looks really uh, romantic, but it's not a good sign for a beauty photographer to do that. So clarity in this case, very light or none. So I'm going to leave it at none. Vibrance is light area saturation and saturation are the extremities. I'm going to take those down a little bit. That's probably just enough. Now I'm going to go to the next panel, which is the tone panel. Command two, or just click on the title, take you there. Usually I separate these sliders because I like the default start and end points to be closer to the extremities so that I'm only affecting the extremities rather than where they uh, normally by default are. So shadows, I just want to see what happens. Now I can add a little bit if I really wanted to. Mm, if I do, it's not going to be very much. And you can see there, if I take it down, that's where the contrast goes up and the saturation goes up as well. But I don't think that would be good for skin tones if I, uh, if I go that direction. Maybe what I'll do is I'll take the shadows back to where they were, zero, and try it this way. That's pretty good. Now, lights. She looks a little bit more lively with, uh, with more lights, but the background starts to disappear, so I'm mm, hesitating. Minus three, so I went down a little bit. Highlights is mostly in the hair, a little bit in the body. I don't mind if it goes up a little bit. It's good. Now, color. Next panel or command three. Some people like to use HSL, which you can pick up at Target and move around a group of um, color, luminosity, saturation, etc. all at the same time. I'm more in favor of using color all and I find where the colors live by just whacking the slider back and forth. If you ever get to here and you say, oh, I don't know, um, yeah, just double click on the, the title or the triangle and it will take it back to zero. So I know the reds are living in a lot in the lips, but also in her face. Now, in her face, I don't want to get her crunchy like this. It's not the nicest thing and it would be hard to retouch out. So even though I like the lips darker, I'm not going to do that just for the lips. So I'm going to take it down a little bit, but not that far. Um, oranges, I'm going to see where they live. And you can see that that one, you wouldn't want to change the luminous much it will look really ugly really fast but I need to know where they are so if I want to change them so I might take down the saturation there I might go up a little bit in luminous why not okay same thing for yellow and you can see that you would make uh, that'd be a big mistake to to make so you wouldn't want to do that but double click on it goes to zero I would take down a little bit of saturation greens I don't think there's much so even though her eyes are kind of green-blue, you don't see it here, there, you don't see anything, nothing living there. Blues, a little bit in the hair, not much, but there is some. Um, purples, not too much either. Yeah, it might be in the makeup. I should have looked closer. I'm not seeing anything changing, so I'm not going to bother with any of those. Now. All of the corrections are done. Let's go off into the more fun stuff, which is press K or the brush tool, because now we're going to get into the um, color corrections that, that help a lot. Since it's set to exposure now out of the list, we might as well start there. So we're going to increase the exposure um, a little bit in our face. It remembers the last used settings. In this case, we're going to try something like there. I've got a magic mouse, so it's... Um, it's kind of nice because horizontal scrolling makes the uh, the brush bigger or smaller. So I'm going to just naturally follow wherever the light was, was going. I'm not cheating. I'm not making something that was dark into light. I'm just emphasizing where there was light existing. So some on the shoulder. And it was coming down here. It's a little bit there that's maybe not the best idea. Oh, it's not bad. That worked. I can make it a little bit lighter there. There. Okay. Everything's looking good. I could do a little bit here, a little bit on the hand. 
And I think that's about right. One of the big things that you see in this image is actually she's a little bit yellow or yellower on this side, or maybe it's the makeup that's a little bit uh, magenta. And here especially you see it. So we're going to do a funky little way of doing that is just to go to color temperature and or tint. And I'm going to take the yellow out by going to blue. And right away I've corrected quite a bit of that uh, the yellow color. And I will even try a little bit further. It's looking better. Not too far, otherwise it looks like a bruise. Good. That's it. And then overall in here, she's a little bit more yellow than her face. Now I could take add yellow into her face. Or I can take the yellow out of this by temperature or even just tint because I can add magenta into this. So actually I can go to tint and the last few settings were plus five magenta. So I'm going to overall just run that uh, around here. I shouldn't have got it on the background, but I did. And if I wanted to see the mask, I press O. It shows me where. If I wanted to erase, press Alt. Click on Auto Mask. In other words, it'll just pick up the grays and erase the mask on the grays without the skin tones. Kind of fun. Very useful little quick tool. The brushes, by the way, in uh, Lightroom actually do work really, really well. I'm not very happy with the, the brushes in Capture One. I don't find them to be um, as efficient or reliable in for, for what I'm doing, for whatever reason, I'm not sure. doesn't matter if I use a tablet or not. Okay, so that's our mask. It's pretty good. I can uh, make it a bit smaller, add a little bit more there. Turn off the mask, press O again. And so we want to see if we add magenta. And there we've matched pretty much, pretty much skin tone in the face. It's good. Do an overall exposure again. We're going to even take her up a little bit further. This time we're going to do face plus. Good. That's perfect. Now what we have to do is a couple last in the details. We'll go new. And we're going to use a preset that I have for just eyes. So it's plus exposure, minus contrast, plus clarity, and something else like highlights, plus 31. But sometimes that's too much. So in this case, it's probably too much because there's a reflector at the bottom of her eyes and it was a little bit too visible. So I just turned that down a little bit. I'll do one more, a little exposure one. I'll go up a little bit higher. And that's because when you have a beauty dish or a hard bowl or something close to the top of the forehead when it's coming down, so you have some shadows, you actually have light fall off. Oops. And the light fall off, it means that you'll have um, a little bit, just the slightest bit less light on the chin and around this area. So I just put that back up to more or less where where it was what I intended it to be without that light fall off the light fall off is is a necessary thing if you want to have uh, any amount of um, like volume in the picture that's about all there is to do on this image uh, one more thing I forgot to do that so let's take it back up to one to one view And we're going to do new, but this time I'm going to take it to shadows and or contrast or and or blacks. Let's go to blacks just for fun. But this time I'm going to use auto mask. When I use auto mask, anything that's the similar colors to what's under the cursor will be selected. So it's going to draw a mask on anything that picks up in the adjacent colors that are underneath the center of the cursor. And that's about perfect. Now I don't want it to go, it's not a question of going uh, 
it's black. So I increase it clarity a little bit, turn the blacks down so they're darker, and I um, increase the contrast. And that's all I would want to do for this image. I might make the, um, I could do the same thing with auto mask on the nails if I thought they were, they should be matched. So I'm actually just auto selecting because I have auto mask on. So this image for me is finished. It's perfect for taking into, into um, Photoshop. Uh, almost perfect. I'm going to do one more contrast. I'm going to increase a little bit on the outside here so it has a, a certain volume. That's good. So I just increase the contrast so it has a, a volume underneath there. Might even change that one here. And I'll do one more, but it goes in the other direction. I will take contrast down overall. So you have less retouching to do. You'll just have to do the um, type of things I said, take out the lines, a couple dots, fix that. A couple bumps in the face, 10 minutes later, it's done. So subscribe to my channel, and that way my next uh, tutorials, you'll know when they come. Thanks a lot.